If you slept at all last <laughs> night, did you wake up at any point a cold sweat and said, what have I done? What uh, have I inherited? No, uh, not a lot of time to even think that much about it. You know, I woke up at uh, 5.15 this morning and off ready to work to uh, build this transition and get going as we approach Inauguration Day. Transition's important, two months to get ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is no manual. Uh, who did you meet with today about the transition and tell me a little bit about that inner circle in your kitchen cabinet right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm putting together my transition team as we speak. Um, and I reached out to um, uh, Mayor Jackson and we had a fantastic conversation uh, this morning. I also uh, intend to reach out to, uh, again, to Council President Kevin Kelly as well. Um, and uh, we're going to be making some announcements early next week about our transition team and how we intend to build uh, a new government as we head to next year. Um, Mike White gave a very um, uh, uh, important endorsement, mm -hmm. and we hadn't heard from him in, in a long time. So uh, how is he advising going forward, yeah. and will he be involved in that well, kitchen cabinet? Well, um, I would be remiss about it and say that it's a smart thing for me to tap into the knowledge of not just uh, former Mayor uh, Michael White, but also uh, Mayor Jane Campbell. I uh, will reach out to them as I plan my transition to get their feedback and understand lessons learned. And I've also have a great network of mayors across the country that I continue to get good counsel from as we uh, try to work to build a, a new government here soon. Uh, top positions to fill first. I mean, I know from having covered many elections, yeah. you're uh, in the past mayoral elects have been meeting privately with people currently mm -hmm. in an administration, mm -hmm. feeling them out, mm -hmm. things going on, but mm -hmm. what positions, cabinet positions, do you expect to fill first that you need to fill first? Yeah, well, um, I think my first hire has to be my chief of staff. Uh, and um, uh, next week, I'll probably have a better sense of my, the top 10 I want to focus on, from our law director to police chief to safety director mm -hmm. uh, to our COO as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's going to be important that we get those critical hires correct so we can hit the uh, starting block strong uh, in the first quarter of next year. Uh, what advice did Mayor Jackson give you, if any? Uh, well, uh, we're going to meet tomorrow, um, but he congratulated me on, on a race well run. Uh, he offered um, his uh, directors to me and my transition team as well, and uh, he promised that we're going to have a smooth transition uh, from a Frank Jackson administration to a Justin Bibb administration. And that's not always been the case between transitions. Yeah. So if, if you have that promise, that's a, a good thing. fantastic. And I'm really, really uh, gracious uh, and, and, and honored that the mayor reached out this morning. And I'm looking forward to working with him and getting his insights as well. I mean, he served the city well. He's been the longest serving mayor in Cleveland's history. I know he has a wealth of knowledge to give me as I approach uh, next year. All right, with your election yeah. and the passage of issue 24, has Cleveland overnight become one of the most progressive cities in America? And if so, is that good or bad? Um, no, I, I'd say this. Um, there was a broad mandate in the results last night uh, about voters wanting us to have a new conversation and look at new ways to address police misconduct. Mm -hmm. uh, and this conversation is happening nationally. And I think, you know, we have a unique opportunity right now to tone down the political rhetoric and have an open, mm -hmm. honest conversation about how to get policing right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. reaching out and meeting with uh, leaders of the police union mm -hmm. and members of our police department to listen to their concerns, hear their feedback, because I want to mm -hmm. fight for them, as well as I want to fight for mm -hmm. our residents to make sure we mm -hmm. rebuild trust between police and residents, because that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing we need to do to have safety all across our city. And you've made that point with us before, um, but now within City Hall, the idea of getting along yeah. and, and, and earning that respect of, of the officers. Issue 24 mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a monumental shift. It is. Uh, for any mayor, uh, let alone uh, mm -hmm. a mayor-elect who's not yeah. served. Yeah. Who's going to be a point person, or how do you plan to tackle implementation yeah. of Issue 24? Well, I, I intend to extend an olive branch to the leadership of the police union, uh, our command staff, uh, and our patrol officers walking the beat and make sure they're a part of the conversation, as well as the grassroots community leaders uh, that work hard to pass Issue 24. Uh, and it's important that we um, recognize the importance of coming together around this issue it may be in the courts. We don't know quite yet, and we'll address that when it comes. But uh, as mayor, I'm going to do everything in my power to bring our community together 
and get this issue right in our city. Uh, last question on this point. Yeah. I mean, do you do you have any fear that issue 24 implementation in those lawsuits you just mentioned yeah. become a distraction to the point that it makes it difficult to carry out other things? And that was the worry, yeah, yeah. I think, even with uh, you know, your opponent who you know, didn't want this for various yeah. reasons, but also didn't want to implement it. There's always that fear in any issue, uh, but um, what I need to do as mayor is to set the tone right, and mm -hmm. I can help set that tone now as part of that transition to mitigate that, to mitigate that risk long term, I believe. Uh, success also depends on working with the uh, legislative body yeah. here, council. So yeah. do you plan on putting your finger on the scale here as we look <laughs> at a new council president, yeah. which right now shapes up between one of your supporters, mm -hmm. Kerry McCarth McC McCormick, sorry, yeah. Uh, definitely a progressive and, and Blaine Griffin who uh, supported Kevin Kelly has portrayed himself a little bit more as a traditional Democrat um, do you get involved in that and does it matter about the unwritten rule yeah. the council has had for decades that if there's a black mayor we got to have a white council president I think I've had enough elections uh, for a while uh, we just finished up our race uh, yesterday uh, and I'm not gonna weigh in into the city uh, council presidency I'm looking forward to working with whoever becomes the next council president uh, I have a great deal of respect for Councilman Blaine Griffin and uh, Councilman Kerry McCormick was an early supporter of my campaign. Yeah. And so um, I can work well with both of them. Uh, you've mentioned before to me that, uh, you know, you do look forward to appointing your own police chief. Mm. Would your chief come from somebody within the ranks of the city of Cleveland? Haven't made that decision yet. Mm -hmm. but Still looking. Not an, I mean, it's not yeah. out of the question. No, that absolutely not. I think there's a lot of great talent yeah. uh, inside our department right now. Um, and. I'm going to look uh, far and wide inside our department and nationally for the right chief, not to create a department that's mired in the status quo, but what does our department need to look like for the next 10, 15, 20 years? And I want a chief that's going to work with me as the next mayor to chart that vision. Uh, what do you say to Kevin Kelly supporters, um, some who yeah. bought into his argument yeah. that you don't have elected experience? How do you, what do you, what do you say to them? How do you get their confidence that you can lead this city? Well, I, I said it last night. Um, I want to be mayor of all of Cleveland, and I intend to listen to them, uh, fight for them, uh, and do what I said I was going to do throughout their campaign. Uh, fight for more mm -hmm. uh, public safety and security, but also make sure we have more accountability in mm -hmm. our police department, uh, make sure we have a modern and responsive city hall, and make sure we continue to improve public education. And um, we, I won't be perfect, but I will listen. I will lead with transparency and integrity. And I believe that's all you can ask for in terms of any elected official. Uh, wrapping up with just a couple last yeah. questions. Justin, you are used to dialing for dollars in the morning <laughs> as a campaign yeah. candidate. Yeah. Uh, who, who are those calls now going to in the morning? What are you uh, doing? I've already started. You know, I had, a, had the privilege to talk to Governor DeWine this morning. Uh, I talked to Senator Sherrod Brown uh, last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to uh, several members of city council already, and I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to calling the rest of city council later today. Mm -hmm. And I've already reached out to a number of different foundation and business leaders to help support financially with the transition. So the work certainly continues in terms of dialing for support. Uh, you uh, have talked a lot about plans for office, but you've had more time to think about it. Now it's real. Yeah. What are those top three priorities as soon as you get in the door in January? Uh, well, right now uh, is uh, hiring a smart, thoughtful, talented cabinet. Uh, number two, a public safety. And three, modernizing city government as we come out of this pandemic and investing in high quality basic city services all across the city. I, I know we've talked about uh, Westside Market and even a, a city hall website, which you mentioned yeah. last night. <laughs> Clearly not the biggest problems Cleveland faces, but yeah. in the context of since they're not, why haven't they been fixed? And these should be the easy ones. Do you look to tackle those yes, things yes. like the West Side Th There's low-hanging fruit there. Uh, and if we can tackle that low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. we give voters confidence mm -hmm. that the mayor has their mm -hmm. back and that Cleveland is a city that can mm -hmm. get these small things right because if we can't get the small things right, how do you expect mm -hmm. us to fix the major mm -hmm. things like child poverty mm -hmm. uh, or the digital mm -hmm. divide? And so uh, we got to hit the ground running mm -hmm. and build positive forward mm -hmm. momentum for our city. And I intend to do that in my first 100 days as mayor. Uh, last question, and, and this will come into focus much more in January when we have a race for new county executive. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Um, speak to the regional role that you play as mayor, because I know parents on soccer fields and elsewhere all over the region were following this race yeah. and asking, you know, is this Justin Bibb going to win? 
you're there. How do you see your role as a, as a regional leader? Well, Why does it matter? So goes Cleveland as the urban core. So goes the entire region. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working with uh, County Executive Armin Budish. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with other regional stakeholders across our county mm -hmm. to make sure we can have a, an inclusive economic comeback coming out of this mm -hmm. pandemic. And I'm going to use the bully pulpit. I'm going to be present and visible mm -hmm. and working with our suburban mayors as well, too, mm -hmm. because we all have to work together to have a thriving region long term. Well, on that last point, you, we do have uh, the talk of regionalism has actually yeah. been a negative word yeah. at times, yeah. even yeah. going back as far when Mike White was in office. The mayor has not embraced yeah. it. I think it was you that mentioned possibility of maybe do we join forces with the health department yeah. of the county. So on that point, do you possibly or are you open to regionalizing services that are going to benefit? I'm, I'm open to regional partnerships with the county uh, and other uh, stakeholders mm -hmm. that helps me do my job as mayor mm -hmm. to serve our residents like public health. Yeah. Uh, and everybody always asks about our, our, our sports teams because we know there's a lot of yeah. economic value for the mayor here. I'm still recovering from that, yes. that Browns um, loss against the Steelers, by the way. Yes, well, that uh, so is every Browns <laughs> fan and beyond. Have you, uh, have you had support or have you talked to any of these team owners? I know some of them behind the scenes were working against you. What, what, yeah. what are you um, hearing? I've only had a conversation uh, with uh, uh, the Haslam family, but... Um, have had a chance yet to meet with the other sports leadership, uh, but uh, uh, looking forward to those conversations here soon. All right, and where do you head the rest of the day? More calls, more calls, more calls, and then maybe a good night's sleep. We'll see. All right, I think we'll <laughs> I'll talk to your, your staff about that. Yeah, sounds Thank good. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Thank you.